A recent article asked, Who broke Bruce in Philly? Which DJ at WMMR in the early 1970s was the most responsible for igniting the career of the boss? While the debate continues, one thing is clear. It was Broadcast Pioneers member Michael Tiersen who was one of the first to play Bruce Springsteen on the radio. Heard these days on the internet, Tiersen played rock music on Philadelphia FM stations seemingly forever. He first took to the air on WXPN while still an undergraduate student at the University of Pennsylvania, a time when the university station was exclusively operated by undergrads. In January 1970, Michael joined WDAS-FM's High Skis Underground as an overnighter. He soon became WMMR music director and was promoted to late night personality where he enjoyed a storied run through 1976. Michael returned to WMMR in 1978 and remained again in his legendary late night position through March of 1992. For the next several years, Michael divided his time simultaneously on WMMR, WXPN, and WALL. That was record store chain Wall of Sound's in store radio station, which Michael produced and voiced. Then in 2002, he joined WMGK, where he developed the Saturday Morning 60s show. Pearson later broke into Sirius Satellite Radio. Currently, Tiersen produces two weekly webcasts. Michael Tiersen's Marconi Experiment airs Saturdays and Sundays on iradiophilly.com. His other website is called radiothatdoesntsuck.com, for which he has produced shows nearly every week since January of 2010. From 1999 to 2003, as Michael Mad Dog Tiersen, he penned the popular pro wrestling column On the Mat for the Philadelphia Daily News. Additionally, Tiersen for over a decade has been the host of the Sundown Concert Series of free outdoor summer shows Wednesdays in Haddon Heights, New Jersey, a new series of Tuesday night concerts in Gloucester City, New Jersey, and has been a solo folk performer. Please join us in welcoming Michael Tiersen to the Broadcast Pioneers Hall of Fame. First of all, thanks to the Broadcast Pioneers for shining some love light on my sorry ass. And I thank those on the committee who have stumped for me for a whole bunch of years keeping the flame alive. There are so many people I could thank, but for tonight I will thank one, the person without whom Michael Tiersen would never have had a career, the program director who hired me twice at WMMR, both times he was there in 1970 and 1978, Jerry Stevens, who was one of the most creative radio people ever, a visionary who pioneered in four different formats in Philadelphia. In an artist's life, the best thing that can happen is to get to work in a form with no history and no rules. I did that with album radio in 1967. The first year that form was done at all. Making it up as we went along was thrilling and never equaled the best experience of my life except for one when I met Lynn, my second wife, who has been gone 21 years. If you're fortunate enough to uh, do that uh, new form more than once, you're a genius. I'm no genius. (laughs) Along the way, I've had the chance to act in a bunch of films, write a weekly newspaper column, the pro wrestling column, to return to being a performing musician that I was before radio, to have had one true love, even if it was fatally flawed, quite literally, to do the shows I do on, as radio art on iradiophilly.com and so much more. There's very little that I've really wanted to do that I never got to try. And that said, I really regret two things. I never got a chance to reinvent myself on midday radio. And I especially regret a meaty film role that fell through where I was going to be this neighborhood guy who people always go to to uh, get stuff done, to cut red tape. And then when nobody was looking, he slaughtered the children. That would have been fun. I know I'm not the easiest person sometimes. I've never really been very good at being a social animal. I've been a solitary most of my life, even back as a boy. I'm awkward with people a whole lot of the time. But in that late night radio thing, I found the perfect outlet and mission for my life. And I do try to live my life through the lenses of grace and dignity and kindness, especially kindness. I strive to be a man I'd love to have as a friend and hate to have as an enemy. (laughs) And one more thing. At the end of his auto... Thank you. At the end of his autobiography, the last thing that James Garner writes addresses the question of how would you like to be remembered? So, how would you like to be remembered? 
I embraced Jim Garner's answer as my own with a smile. Thank you. <laughs>